Welcome to the Kent Randall Platoon Podcast. I'm James White along with Sojourn Shelton, Warren Heron. You know, tough, tough losses past weekend against Ohio State. We knew it was going to be a tough matchup before we dive into the details of all that. Meaning, we were in Madison. You know, some of us, you know, Sojourn had been back in Madison for quite some time since she finished so playing. Long time. You know, I, I went to a game last year, but it was a different feel. I know Warren, you know, you. You've been to the game not too long ago and whatnot as far as being a you know a recruiter and whatnot. But what was that feeling like being back in Madison? Not just the game, you know, being back on campus. Obviously, it's a it's a different feel. You know, we don't know a lot of the people there on campus and the players, coaches, and all that. But I thought I thought it was awesome because the last time I went, I went with my my wife, you know, my kids, which was awesome for my kids to get there, the wife to be there. That's where I met my wife. Just to be back there with your your teammates, man. That's what. You know, that's what it's all about. That's where all the memories that you form. I don't know how y'all were feeling being back on campus. Yeah, bro, it was extremely dope, man. Like you said, it's a, it's a lot of new faces, um, but it's also a lot of people still there, uh, you know, th- from when we were there. You know, I, like I, I date back to us getting there on Friday and us walking through, like, you know, the, the athletic interests and, and, and seeing the lady that's been there the whole time since I was there. And mm-hmm. she greeted us. She remembered all of us. Like, that's what it was about. And then just being able to share those memories and, you know, uh, just that experience with you guys, right? Like Warren, James, even to have Ken come with us. <laughs> you know, I've seen yeah, a lot yeah. of people. I've seen a lot of people <laughs> saying, you know, our names and like, who's the third person? So <laughs> it just was funny with that. And then even to have Joey, like, yeah. it just it was, a, it was a really fun experience. I'll tell you what was really dope, though, just, uh, you know, being able to go to the, to the family tailgate. Of like you know former yeah, players fun. like getting there with a you know catch up where you know Arnis and his pops, um, being able to see Alec and and Beagle and then you know it, it was cool for Chris to stop by like that yeah. was truly one of my favorite teammates while I was there, um, you know in, in Madison and finishing up but you know just getting able to chop it up with those guys and share this moment with you guys uh, it was a fun weekend. About you, Warren. You know your your wife got to you know get a little taste of Madison <laughs> for the first time too. So what was that like for you, man? Yeah, man, it was it was great, you know, being able to get her on campus to, you know, just see what I've been passionate about for so long and the place that I call my second home. Like, so John was saying, like, being able to spend that with y'all, you know, my best friends, my teammates, uh, being able to run into Arneson and Beagle and Ricky and, and Chris Orr and things like that. I never played with Chris, but, you know, another Badger and to be able to spend that moment with him and stuff like that, that was cool, man. Being able to see people from academics that we hadn't seen in years and, you know, people still remember who you are and all that stuff, that was yeah. real cool. Um, man, it was it was just a, a nostalgic experience, you know, all the places we used to hang around. Yeah. You know, on campus, the places we used to eat at, you know, stuff like that. It was, it was surreal, man. Like, I mean, I don't get a chance to go back often, but when I do, it just, you know, it always feels like home, you know, regardless. Yeah, man, it was, it was great, man. From, you know, I forgot it was Halloween weekend, you know, getting there, you know, <laughs> Friday, <laughs> you know, us being in college, that was the time right there, you know, Halloween is taken very seriously there. So it was, Sure. And it was cold as heck there too, man. I, I was, I was it, it, just it's, mad it's crazy, that, bro. you know. You know, being in Illinois and going there, the weather was completely different. I definitely didn't bring, you know, enough. You know, I I looked Back cool enough. on the sideline with the hoodie, but we freezing. I, <laughs> I was froze, man. My hands, my feet, everything. That's that's what I will say. Like, you know, being out there on the field during the game. And that hawk oh, hit me, wow, man. That's boy. that's the one thing I don't miss about playing football. That playing that cold weather, I, I was cool with it. You know, <laughs> the while I was playing, I didn't mind it whatsoever. I just figured it out. You know, especially at Wisconsin, I, I had no clue. We couldn't wear sleeves. You just had you maybe had a hand warmer and some tights. That's that's about it. You just had <laughs> nah, nah. We had heated benches too. That helped, and the heaters yeah. on the sideline. But it was definitely a surreal experience, man. Especially the tailgate, man. It's it's so cool. Yeah. We got to talk to recruits. And, like, it's just funny. Just what I was trying to express to them about the relationships, like, I had with y'all. And like, y'all family, some of our teammates' families, and going to the tailgate, you know, meeting, you know, some families of players currently and, like, just having a conversation with them. I think that's what makes Wisconsin just such a special place. You you may just know of somebody or you may not know them at all, but you could just strike a conversation and kind of build a relationship from, you know, from them giving you – Food, we got Chick fil A from, you know, some family that we didn't even know they offered it up yeah. to us, drinks, whatever. I mean, that's just, you know, that's what Madison's all about. I don't know how, how it was for y'all. It was just, it was just cool, man. Just. Yeah, and like, <laughs> and like, even, like, even from the step, like, 
the drink that uh, the family made for us. I don't, I, I don't know exactly, <laughs> yeah. but it was something that <laughs> it like, was you know good. What I'm like, it, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like it was something that I normally wouldn't, you know, if yeah. I was back home or if I was having a cocktail with you know family, whatever the case is. It's just something I, you know, I wouldn't have tried. But like, I think that's what what you know why Madison is such a special place because it's like there's so many things that I've got to expand my horizon and be able to try like bro for the longest that I've been (laughs) to Madison bro I did not have brats like I remember it's like okay the cheese curds and trying that stuff like oh so not even sidetracked but like even doing the farmer's market on Saturday on Saturday like that was a dope experience Warren you put me on the cheese bread yeah Um, now AJ White put me on that long time I don't know I I don't know what phone calls I gotta make to somebody but I need somebody to (laughs) mail over (laughs) overnight hey we we gonna put the address in the comments shout out shout out to Stella's man Stella's, Stella's. Stella's <laughs> but like the cookies we had at that one spot like bro it's just it, it's just a truly a special place man it's nothing sure. like it it's truly nothing like it yeah, you man. know what though I will say like it was really nice being honored as alumni bro like yeah. so yeah. you made a really good point about that this past weekend like we were talking about it and just like a lot of former players don't get that opportunity but the fact yeah. that you know Wisconsin honored that, honored us as being alumni, you know, Coach Fickle, you know, coming from an outside program, coming in and honoring us as former players, allowing us to be around the players. Like, hey, tell them about that special content. I mean, we got some interviews of players. A lot of people don't get, bro. We got some nice exclusives, so coming soon. But, I mean, that was just an amazing opportunity. Like, like, like Like we talked about, like a lot of people don't get that opportunity playing where they were. But for us to be able to go back, to be able to get onto the field, watch a game and things like that, like, you know, that's what it's about. You know, you put blood, sweat, and tears in on the field yeah. and be able to come back and to just, like, experience the, the, the things that you helped build. Man, that was amazing. Yeah, man. And that, it wasn't... Yeah, and, and, and it wasn't even, like, there was no pushback or anything. Yeah. Like, right. and, you know, I want to... Uh, you know, I just want to give a special shout-out and thanks to, you know, the University of Wisconsin and, you know, everybody in athletics, uh, you know, that, that helped us, you know, enjoy our weekend. Because, like I said, when, when it came to asking for you know, sideline passes and being able to, you know, get on the field and, and, and watch the guys warm ups and then also being able to, you know, get, you know, exclusive interviews from, you know, our top guys on the team. Like there was never really, you know what I'm saying? Like there was never no pushback. It was like yeah. trying to make sure we found the right time that for that worked for them and then that worked for us. And, you know, that that's pretty cool. Like Coach Fickle and, and the new staff, they didn't have to do that, right? Like, yeah, I mean, right. we're, we're guys that were, we're far removed yeah. now if you think about it. Not like five years. Like I mean, I'm, I'm I think I'm knocking on six, seven years, and yeah. you guys are older Grandpa. than me. So you know, for them to like you said, <laughs> like you said, one for them to honor us and be able to give us that access, like that's dope. It's a plus, and man, you know, it, it's it's you know, you can't get you can't beat it. Yeah, man. Shout out to Chad Kimmel, Patrick Hurd. Yep. Chad, Nate, Patrick, all those guys, Chad, man. Pat, yeah. Alec, Chris McIntosh, yeah. Alec James. Alec Chris James. McIntosh, bro, big time for sure. Yeah, yeah man. For sure. Yeah, appreciate all of those guys. Yeah, appreciate it. I said fellas. just felt very welcome, like y'all kind of said. Like a lot of players, other programs, they may not get that type of love, especially once a new you know, coaching staff comes in. They were very welcoming from, they said, anytime y'all come, y'all welcome to sit in on meetings, come to practice. For so that real? was, yeah. you know, that was, that was dope. Cause especially that type of weekend, you know, biggest game of the year, yeah. you know, Fickle's playing his, you know, former, you know, coaching staff, the school he played for. So he could barely, very easily been like, nah, like this, this is not the week for any of that, you know, exclude like all that, maybe next weekend, that type of thing. But they, they welcomed it all. But it was, it was cool, man, just to see, you know, their new approach on everything, you know, going out to the practice, you know, on yeah. Friday. It, it was different than how we practice, but, you know, like I said, it's a new generation and all that. Those guys, they were, they were locked in, ready to have fun. But, yeah, man, I, definitely a trip I remember forever. Even, like, the at halftime, the, the drone light show. Bro, that was lit. That was lit. Yeah, that was lit. <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy to see, like, how technology, bro, like, to be able to flip through all those like the logo, the you know the Bucky, the the hand sign, like to be able to flip like where, how are they learning to do this stuff? And mindful you, there's somebody probably 10, 15 miles away controlling all this stuff from like a computer or a controller. Like it's it's the, the everything is changing, it's constantly evolving, but you know it's it's all it's all for the better and good. Yeah, man, and, you know. 
We took a took a L against Ohio State, but like I said, ESPN still gives us a thirty four percent chance to win the Big Ten West. You know, I said Iowa now has the tiebreaker against us. So, what do you guys kind of think is going to need to be done for us to you know make it to that Big Ten championship or just at least you know be in that contention? For me, obviously, just, we just got to win out, and we need Iowa to lose a game. That's kind of what I think it has to be. I was. I was proud of the way they competed, man. They they yeah. came out. They they weren't afraid. They first drive by the defense. They start driving the ball down the field. They trying you first possession, going for it on fourth down. You come up with a stop. You strip sack all that stuff. Man, I was big stop. I, I, I was proud of them boys, man. Because very easily could have just you know backed down and not I'm like oh it's Ohio State. You know we second string quarterback. We we not this and that. But they they held their own. I don't know what you guys kind of thought from that game. Bro, um, it was yeah, it was it was yeah, a, it was dumping. Uh, yeah, it was a great game and and just game plan wise, like to be able to see both sides of the ball just competing, right? Like even with a backup quarterback, the way you know Lock like he played, like you 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 can't fault him, right? Like he yeah. played a good game to be in the situation that he was in, and then just hats off to our defense. You know whatever it is they had him going through throughout the week or whatever motivation, like them boys came out ready to go you know just being able to get pressure on the quarterback you know being sticky and tight in coverage those are the type of things and 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 you know stepping stones that we're gonna have to go forward with um you know you said like you said if if we're trying to get to december which obviously that is the that is the plan so just being able to to build momentum off this game and capitalize and keep going like you said we some things have to happen for us to get to indy obviously with you know iowa having to lose but you know i was thinking about it earlier and during the game like this was my favorite time of the year, right? Because, like, all the upsets, all the crazy things, like, yeah. this is where the madness <laughs> until your college football schedule starts. And all you have to do is just control what you can control, control which is control. the games right. that's on your schedule and let everything else unfold and you watch. But, uh, you know, the first thing, like I said, you, you, you got to take care of the stuff that's on your schedule. And, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing us move forward. About you, one, what you think need to be done to, you know, kind of finish out the season the right way, which, like I said, we – very winnable games for the last, you know, four weeks. But, I mean, no Big Ten play, you don't come to play on Saturday. Any of these teams could most definitely, you know, beat you on any given Saturday. What you think need to be done from our team, you know, these next four weeks to kind of – like I said, we, the goal where we want to be, I mean, maybe not, you know, college football playoff, but to be Big Ten champs, that's still a possibility. So, like I said, I love the way they fought. But what do you think they need to do to finish things out the right way this year? Again, I mean – some things that we've done in the past, like Soldier saying, like we're really good. we've been really good in in the fall in the back half of the year. Uh, I mean that's where it matters, you know. That's where a lot of the upsets and things like that happen. So continue to play strong. Like take like for for, for the defense, for example. Like you just came off a big game. Obviously we had the L. Nothing to like celebrate about or anything like that. But you played a really good game. You put a really good team up against the ropes and had them stressing out. So continue that. That's momentum. Like continue that. You know what you're capable of doing. So carry that throughout the season. Offense continue to build. You got a freshman quarterback under the helm who's playing really well. Continue to get him yeah. some confidence. And you just like you said, control what you can control. I mean, this is, you know, we hope Iowa loses again. I mean, it's very realistic. You yeah. know, not saying that Iowa's not a good team, but toward this back half of the year, you know, things can happen. We just have to control what we control. Continue to win football games and continue to focus on uh, what's up next. Can't look too far ahead. Focus on the next week ahead of you. So a lot of it, yeah, like we said, control what you can control. 100%. Now let's get to the X's and O's. So kind of like what I talked about, I thought the defense got off, you know, to a great start. You know, Ohio State first possession, driving the ball down the field, go for it on fourth down, get the stop, you know, strip sacks. So they, they really had it going, got four sacks, nine TFLs. I know, you know, at the end of the game, the statistics, you know, Ohio State had it look, you know, kind of overwhelming. But I feel like they held their own, man. Like I said, Ricardo played a, a heck of a game. I thought, you know, some of the other DBs, they tried to step up to the challenge. It's a... It's a tall task it's to guard that. Task, guard task. 18 over there. Isn't it? It's a tall <laughs> task. There's no easy work, which that kid is is very impressive. It was cool to watch him, you know, up mm -hmm. live and in person. I say, he, he, a big, he a big joker too, man. He, he yeah. Not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and that's why, like, even we were yeah, talking yeah, about it in sure. the game, like, I, like, I don't know it. I didn't. I never got a chance to see you know Big Marv play in person, yeah. but obviously we know what kind of what type of player he was. But 
just the like the comparison i'm like bro there's no way marvin was this big yeah. like when you see <laughs> yeah. him in person he's like all of six three yeah. whatever he is like he's, he's, yeah. Yeah. Like he's yeah. well put together like sure. and it was and like like you, you kind of hinted to it like for ricardo man which I, he kind of gives me like the vibe of you, James. Yeah. Like just a really good player, but extremely laid back. Yeah. Like he's not gonna, you know, like he's not gonna boast or anything. And I'm gonna do it for him. <laughs> like Cardo, bro, he, bro, yeah, he's balling in his show. Bro, it's, it's, it's super dope to watch, right? Like, a kid from South Florida like us being able to come up to Madison and then, you know, just seeing all the success that he's been having. He's been he's been putting in the work. He's been balling. And then when you get a chance to shine on a big stage like this against, you know what I'm saying, like arguably the best player in college football and probably, like, he's going to be a top five pick, right? Like, that's what you come to these type of schools to, you know, partake in and, Man, it's it's been dope to see him, you know, be able to step up to the plate and lead on that back half, uh, you know, the back end in our secondary. Um, and uh, you know, I, I'm I'm throwing it out there, man. You have have my dog a campaign for the Thorpe Award or something yeah, like sure. that. Like I, I want to start seeing his name, you know, on those in those conversations, you know, as far as like you know winning a Thorpe and just having that stuff around campus because he deserve it. He's he's done everything and. Um, he's leading those guys for sure. Yeah, man, he he definitely deserves. It. He need to be in that that conversation for the Thorpe Award. I know, as of last week, the leader in interceptions was five interceptions, so he tied that. He has five now. He said he's a pretty reserved dude. I, mm-hmm. you know, he, like we got to talk to him you yeah. know, on Friday. He, yeah, he was locked in. He ready. He's yeah. ready for the moment. <laughs> he was like, tapped in for like, sure. Like, like we we know. Like we go up against one of the top. You know, receivers in the country, you know, so you play D B, you gotta you gotta bring your A game. He brought that. Mm-hmm. You know, that little double move, you know, they try to run on him Bro, early on, broke it up. Oh he, he he was bringing that's that energy, man. Tape. Yeah, teach yeah, tape, right? Teach tape. Patient. Teach tape sure. You know, went up, high pointed, knocked the ball away, man. He had a even that interception, that was that was impressive. Bro, that was Just smart. Bro, he, he, bro, <laughs> like, he's, smart bro. he's a smart player. He's a very intelligent player. Yeah. And like, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of intelligent, you know, you know, athletes and football players out there. But when you make those type of plays like that in these type of games, and it's it's just things that like it, it honestly it feels like it's it looks like it's in slow motion for him, yeah. right? Like yeah. everything's playing out how he needs it and he wants it. And He's like the 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 hardest part. I'm, like the easiest part is like you said, just letting it play out, yeah. things crossing and coming towards you. But the hardest part is actually catching the yeah, ball catching and picking it off. You know what I'm saying? Bro, and like even if you have seen the, body, the catch, like don't. the catch was out. It was it, it was a, a great play, man. Like he continued to make plays like that. I know you said he's he's kind of. I think he's tied for a second the most in the country as guess with yeah. with a whole bunch of other guys. But like. Man, he continued to make plays like that. He got the pick six, and he's going to play more teams that are going to throw the ball. Yeah, you know, I just want to, cons- I just want to see not only the whole secondary um, have success, but like, I, like I'm truly happy for him. And uh, he's, he's, we, we said it a lot this weekend. He's the one. Like, yeah, yeah. he truly is. He's got it. And, and Warren, I, I thought the defensive front did a, a pretty decent job. Like I, said, I thought, I thought, yeah. I mean, they ended up with, you know, whatever, a bunch of yards rushing, but you know, that first half or so. They, they were getting after the quarterback. They were, mm-hmm. you know, getting those oh, TF9, TF9. That, that's a lot, man. Like, I thought, you know, James yeah. Thompson, he had some plays. I know he had yeah. a, like, a, they got through a bad penalty on him. It was, it was like a unsportsmanlike kind oh, of crucial yeah. fourth yeah. down yeah. stop, bro. Yeah, come bro, on, Bro, he's man. stuffed, buddy, yeah. bro. Yeah, this is one of the things, like, we talk about it all the time, man. You have, when you play Ohio State, like, I'm going to say it. Like, we said, you have to beat Ohio State and you got to beat the refs, bro. Like, you got to beat everybody in that state. Like, you got to leave no doubt, right? And just like it was just one of those plays where there was no, I mean, the man made a phenomenal play. Crucial, crucial play. He gets up, he celebrates a little bit toward our sideline, bro, and they want to throw a flag, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's just stuff that just, it, it makes you mad, man. But it's things like that that happen. But, you know, again, it's one play, you know, it is one play, and you got to continue to move forward. And that's what the boys did. They played very well throughout the rest of that game. Obviously, there was a couple of big plays uh, that Ohio State made. Hats off to Ohio State being able to do that. Uh, toward the end of the game, but the guys played very well, bro. Four yeah. sacks, nine TFLs, bro. We've been talking about this 
uh, literally all year getting pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, you know, yeah, resetting the yeah. line of scrimmage, getting into the backfield, bro. They was hitting, bro, and they came on a mission. And you could really see that. You could really see everything start coming together. So I'm really excited to see what happens this back half of the year as the offense continues to develop uh, to the under Braden Lock and the defense continues to take this momentum, bro. We're gonna be really good these next few games. Yeah, man, that's for sure. That's, you kind of you know alluded me to kind of the next point I was gonna try and get to. You know, defense creates three turnovers. We only get three points out of all those turnovers. So I feel like offensively, we just haven't been playing that complimentary game with the offense. When you get three turnovers in a game versus Ohio State at it's that, win. you got to mm-hmm. you gotta win that football game. You got to mm-hmm. capitalize it, capitalize on it offensively. You get an interception, you punt it. You get a good you know punt return from DK. You miss field goal. So miss it's like yeah. <laughs> when you're getting those games, like starting off great defensively, offense, you got to – you know, find a way to get in a rhythm early. And I think the it's kind of another week with the passing game. You know, I thought Braden, you know, he was trying his best out there. He, he was staying in the pocket. And some He had some nice throws in there. And then at times, you know, nobody's open or maybe a drop here and there. It's just, it's just been very inconsistent. And whenever they can, you know, hit their rhythm in the passing game, man, I feel like then this team will eventually take off and hopefully is hopefully is this year like you know these these next four games they can find find mm-hmm. a way to get it going cuz i mean there's still a, there's still plenty of opportunities to get where they yeah. want to be if that passing game could just get they got guys that could do it you see flashes from everybody you see it from you see it from Paul and you see it from Bell you see it from you know all DK Bryson Green, Bryce and Green. You, you see it yeah. from everybody oh if, yeah Man, like I just <laughs> you you get like you get yeah. excited like watching. You see the flash of like, all right, they about to hit a rhythm. This like, all right, they just kind of disappear. We gotta wait, you know, for the next drive type of thing. But yeah, man, I think they just gotta do a better job protecting the football. We had the, the one turnover. I know Braylon fumbled early in the football game, and obviously that's gonna be a another thing. We're gonna be missing him probably for a few weeks. So how wow. do you think y'all that's sure. gonna kind of affect us going forward? I know we have you know Jackson Aker and. He hasn't played, you know, too many big snatches yet, but he's going to have to probably play a pretty big role going forward. I know some defenses that we're going up against probably the next few weeks aren't the greatest, so it could be a good chance for him to kind of get in the rhythm, get some good snaps, and then you can kind of form that one-two punch going forward. One thing I did want to add, though, and, like, it's, it's always, I don't know, it's it's always a field thing from you know a coaching standpoint but like like you like you said as far as like you know causing the turnovers and um you know getting a you know getting the the, the positive punt return like something that really bothers me and it happened to us and I'm starting to see it a lot in college football and I don't understand like I don't know why um but like teams get into the one yard line and you know not you know getting like in the gun and from yeah. you know and not being on the center so like yeah. for instance going into halftime right like you're on the one yard line you run the fake uh which is a, which was a, was a dope yeah. play like that <laughs> is that was yeah. that was the yeah. one that yeah. you know what i'm saying that you 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 kind of schemed and you drew up all week to get mm-hmm. and you run it and i mean obviously you know uh you know um sky's knee end up being down but you know you got two plays from the one yard line and we're getting in the gun and it's like i just don't know like i wonder what the analytics or the The you know the numbers are behind (laughs) it but when you got a running back like braylon right get under the center and just get six because again we alluded to it against ohio state there's so many other things that you have to do right and we all know three is not gonna be you know scoring field goals is not gonna beat a team like that right like you got to be able to put six you know on the board so i think that was i think that was kind of like really like a big turn i won't say a turning point in the game but you know leaving those four points on the scoreboard i think really and in hindsight looking at how the flow of the game could have went i think that was a um i think that was a, a a big you know piece of it and then just leaning on you know the the running back situation um, you know, losing Braylon is, is, is big right now, right? But I think it's also good to, I think it's also good to see what you have to be able to work yeah. with. And um, like we we have guys on, we have guys, you know, in, in the running back room, and we're gonna have to truly lean. Like losing Chez, and then now losing, you know, Braylon, and, and obviously like the the biggest part of our season, we're gonna have to lean and rely now on the passing yep. game. Like we're gonna <laughs> have to figure it out and start. Uh, like I don't know scheming it up or seeing how we're going to be able to get all those guys that we named that we feel are 
are, you know, good good receivers, getting them the ball in space and, you know, being able to push the ball down the field. Yeah, what, what Soldier's yeah. was talking about, Warren, like how, as a defensive lineman, the, the y'all play it a little bit different when, you know, at the one-yard line, it's a, you know, in the, they in the shotgun versus, yeah. you know, obviously under center, you know, two bags. Or it, nah, bro. Nah, bro. You put heavy in there on the goal line regardless. I mean, obviously, depending on personnel, but you put your bigger bodies up front. You put your biggest bodies up front. You put them in the middle, and you expect a run. You wait. You play for a run. You stack the box, and you let your guys play man on the outside. That's basically what you do. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. somebody correct but, me if on the back but, end. But, but I'm saying, like, but, as, uh, a, as a defensive lineman, like, if you see a team in the gun, do you feel, like, a little bit even more comfortable, like, Stopping the run versus like them being under center. Oh yeah, it's much yeah. easier. It's much easier because now you got you don't have your running back going full yeah. steam ahead downfield or a school full, full full steam ahead upfield downfield. Yeah. You know, coming at you, it's you get more time. I feel like you have more time in the gun to be able to make a you know make a play get into the backfield. But if you got coming when you when you have a guy like Braylon coming downhill to six six two six three two hundred and fifty pounds, bro, you want to put him under center or if you're gonna go from the gun, bro, put that boy in a pistol, turn around and handle yeah. the ball and let him go. Full speed you know into the end zone i mean i don't think again i think we're changing into this gun yeah. this gun style a little bit too much in all situations when you know when there we you, go when you're in when you're within five <laughs> with you when you're at their five yards bro everything should be yeah. in my opinion you should start getting under center or going out of the pistol and getting your running back going downhill he only got to get yeah. five and you know Going full speed ahead, Braylon's gonna yeah. fall for He's a walking five yards. <laughs> He's a walking five yards, walking like five period. Yards. And so, I mean, for us, I mean, as a defensive front, I mean, it's so much easier when you see a team going out of gun on the goal line within the five, within five, because you know you have time. Because he's got to catch the ball. He's got to turn. He's got to hand the ball off. You know what I'm saying? You're not worried about QB sneak. You're not worried about fullback dives or anything like that. So it gives you the time to just get off the ball and go get somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whereas now, when you get a running back under, under center or, again, in the pistol, you got you to you gotta, you gotta bear down, right? You know, you see guys getting in the four-point stand, getting lower, trying to get lower than the, than the next man so it is a lot easier yeah. but um <laughs> and, and so much and so much of this is it's it's a copycat league like we yeah. all know that ohio state was doing it to us <laughs> yeah. fourth and one tush under push. Center. Yeah, do tush it push. you know what yeah. i'm saying like get on the center tush push and i just think like that right now is the cheat code to <laughs> if you get on yeah. the one yard line to scoring, right? Do the little tush push thing, yeah. And just to get we the we had what well, it was first uh, first year, like first and goal from like the the two. So Bro, we had four yeah, downs. So. Yeah, we had we so we we I, I, if I'm not mistaken, no, because we end up kicking the yeah. field goal. So we had we had we we ran the the fake tush push and threw it to Sky, which he well, scored, but his knee yeah. was down. Uh, and then for two plays, we got in the gun. We, we had we a gun. It. We did a. Uh, we, we did a. We did a uh, uh, inside zone. Yeah. And then we turned around. We did a yeah. shovel. And that's where Braylon. And, got and, hurt. and that's where he got hurt. And that's where he got hurt. And then we obviously we had to take the three going yeah. into halftime. So like I, I wouldn't if you if you stop us on the one yard line with you know Braylon, he just can't get in the end zone. You know that's just something you just got to chalk it up and you got to live with. But I think it just I don't know. It just bothers me that a lot of teams are now like I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it on Sundays in the NFL. I'm seeing it on Saturdays. Like we just get I don't want to say too cute, but like just just get on the yeah. center and score. Yeah. For me, the only yeah. I think there you go ahead. Oh my bad. Go ahead, Jay. No, you got no, it. No, the only way you get in the gun for me is if you know you're getting a, a look to create a light box. That's the only way for me. Like for us in New England, yeah. we would the sure. only time we got in the gun on the goal lines, we knew we were getting five for five and essentially I just had to make the right read and you got numbers. You got numbers. It's gonna be an mm -hmm. easy touchdown. That's kinda my mm -hmm. opinion on that, I always much rather be under center on the goal line. I like I'm like I like running the ball from the gun, but I much much rather you know be under center. But yeah, it's just, it's the a tricky situation. A lot of a lot of teams are doing it. That's the kind of mo of spread offenses, air raid, all that yeah. stuff. So I guess yeah. we just gotta gotta chalk it up, man. But now let's yeah. get to the scouting report. So next week, take on Indiana on the road. You know, another Big Ten football game, obviously. Mm -hmm. This is a team, they played Penn State, you know, pretty tough last week. They <laughs> they jumped out the gate. You know, what's, this is a team that struggles, you know, to score points, struggles to throw the football, all that. But they came out, they came out throwing that rock last week. So, yeah, we got to, yeah, we got to, we got to come out ready to play this week. You can't, you know, we kind of talk about, you can't let Ohio State beat us twice and let this carry over. You got to bring the same intensity on the road against a Big Ten opponent. 
I said they they jumped out of the gate. They had a 90 yard touchdown. I think on their first possession had a 69 yard passing touchdown against a, a good defense. Now that that Penn State defense yeah. don't give up big plays, so for Indiana to do that. They're trying to figure themselves out a little bit. I mean, they don't have anything to lose. They're not playing for much at this point. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenge. Like I said our our passing game is gonna have to get it going. Defense is gonna have to come with the same intensity once again. Can't can't sleepwalk over there. I mean, it's not gonna be a, a raucous environment, which can, you know, sometimes be, you know, <laughs> a, a problem, I would say, for especially offensive defense, you sleepwalk into the game, they make a couple plays, next thing you know, you know, it's 14 0. So this is a team. I think, you know, they're not one of the better teams in our league. And I'm sure you hear it from, you know, our fellow Beyond the Big Ten podcast. You probably hear them, <laughs> hear them stress it every week, you know, talk about, you know, their program. They they always have players, though. I will get on that. They have players. They, they, sure may, yeah, yeah, yeah. they may not, they may not be the best they team, really but they, they got some players over there. If you give them some confidence, if you give them, you know, some advantages, they going to they gonna make some plays and you can be in a dog fight. Capitalize for sure. <laughs> Yeah. Also, I don't know what you're yeah. <laughs> Nah so like Like you said Like they always have players And one thing about Indiana Is like for some reason Like you said They could As bad as <laughs> Statistically they are They can always Score points Like they're either Gonna score 40 yeah, Or they're gonna three, Score you know, seven. Six or three or <laughs> Like that right Like so It's just a matter of What Indiana you Honestly What Indiana I, you gonna you, get What Indiana you gonna get yeah. You know in my time Playing like I, well, both both times that we played in there, it's kind of been rainy games. Like, I wonder what the weather's going to be like, especially, like, in the Midwest right now. It's been kind of, yeah, yeah. you know, like a little gloomy, <laughs> little, I don't know, like storm going through or whatever the case is. But, like, for some reason, we always play Indiana, it's raining, and they still trying to air it out. They still trying to get to the end zone. So, um, you know, like Warren alluded to a little bit earlier just now, like, bro, we're just going to have to get pressure, put pressure on the quarterback, put him in situations where he's rushing and he's airing, you know, he's airing throws and um, – you know, th this is another week for those guys in the back end, man. Go get you yeah. one. You know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, stay within the, you know, the scheme and the, and, you know, the the rules of the defense. But this is where you go out there and have fun, man. You know, the ball's gonna be in the air. Go attack yeah, it. Their, their quarterback, yeah. yeah, probably his his best game of the year. I know early in the year they had a different quarterback start and they kind of figured things out. But their quarterback, 13 and 19, efficient, 269 yards, three TDs. He did have yeah. a pick. Yeah, they they they, they made some. You gonna get some turnover opportunities. I know early on in the year they're kind of trying to run some mm -hmm. option. I don't know how much of that they still trying to do. So defensively, you're gonna have to be alert. Especially, you know, last week I, I forgot to talk about that a little bit earlier against Ohio State that we gave up a lot of plays on that edge. So Indiana's for sure I was just about for a hundred percent. Indiana is not the team yeah, they're playing so, with. And, you know, they smoking <laughs> mirrors. They play well on the perimeter. <laughs> they have playmakers. So we have to protect the edges, man. Gotta protect the edges. We gotta be able to come up and make play because they're gonna see exactly yep. what happened against Ohio State. <laughs> copycat. And they're gonna do the exact same stuff. We in a copycat league. They're gonna do the same thing. We gotta do that, and we gotta be able to win the field position game because that really hurt us last. That really hurt us on Saturday. It's being it's being able to flip the field. Like we gotta be able to punt the ball downfield. Get out this rugby, you know, no, I ain't no shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what Facts. that was, bro, but get that ball in the air, get some hang time, let our guys get down there, force a fair catch, or force let make them force a, make them, you know, make them uh, a fumble the ball or whatever it may be, or muff the kick or muff the catch or whatever. But we have to be able to do better playing the field position battle because yeah. the last couple weeks with Iowa and Ohio State, they hands down won the field position battle. They had some great punters, and I know we got a good punter. We just got to be able to put the ball on the opposite side. Side of the 15 to 10 yeah. to 20 pin them pin them so definitely something we got to watch out for yeah i think the the edge of the defense is going to be tested early mm -hmm. and often like they have some they got a little dude Jalen lucas a little like running back slash slot receiver punt return he like he one of them guys we give him a little crease yeah, yeah, and Shane yeah Wynn, exactly right? like he bro for he real this year and like punt returns kick returns last year he had a couple to the house so definitely gonna have to be all over him you know, with the punt return, we go giving them, don't give them no short punts or no hang time. He definitely could, you know, take, yeah. he can muff some too. He, he will do that. But if he catch it, he definitely a playmaker. So this going to, it's going to be, I think yeah. it's going to be a little test for us this week. Going on the road after a big loss, mm -hmm. in the home game, the atmosphere going to be complete, going to be the complete opposite, you know, what you saw last oh, weekend. Yeah. I say, go ahead to bring your own juice. It's definitely one of those games. Now let's get to the word on campus. So going on the road, Indiana. I don't know, Soldier. I don't know if you played. You played in Indiana at all. Never played, played in Indiana. Indiana. I know 
I think I played there only yeah, once, I believe. And yeah, we played yeah, that one time. They, they stadium, it's stadium. It's all right. It's pretty nice. The locker room, if it's a locker room, ain't that nice. But it's okay. going to, like I said, it's going to be one of them games. You're going to have to bring your own juice. I remember playing there. I think it was my junior year, I believe. I, it's, like I said, if you if you come, you know, the right way, if you come prepared, you know, for this football game, you're going to have some opportunity. Like, I hear you said so. It's the passing game. Gonna have to get it going. If you come prepared yeah. and ready to go, you are gonna have some opportunities to get some confidence in this football game. I thought early in the year the Indiana defense they played pretty solid, but as the year you know has gone on, they kind of have loosened up a little bit. So this could be a a great game for this passing game, you know, to really find some opportunities. Braden Locke. This could be a game mm-hmm. where you can throw for you know three hundred yards or two hundred fifty plus yards, where mm-hmm. a couple receivers can you know get 70, 80 yards. Jackson Aker, you can you can find your rhythm and get some confidence as a mm-hmm. back. So, my, I know my my last time playing, you know, Indiana, I feel like I had like three touchdowns. I had like a I'm yeah. about to say, I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. my senior year, I had like an eighty yard, like a ninety some yard touchdown. The, the year before that, mm-hmm. no, I had some of my better games against Indiana. I'm not gonna lie. That's <laughs> 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 them boys. Up, <laughs> man. Had some, had some long had runs. It. I feel like every year we played, even like ever since my freshman year, I feel like I had like a sixty plus yard tug on them. So. It's a team, like I said, they don't have much to play for. I, I do like their coach, though. Their head coach, he's a guy who really cares. He'd he be fired up trying to get those guys going. So, like I said, no matter what their record is, I think the boys going to have to be locked in. I don't know if y'all have any stories of playing against Indiana. Or, I don't know. if you, you played in that game, right, when we played there on the road, Warren? Yeah, I played yeah. in that game. Uh I'm gonna be honest. I don't think I had a ton of stats yeah. against Indiana. Not saying I was trash or like that, but they played a lot. <laughs> hey, hey, but they played a lot on the perimeter. Yeah. It's a perimeter yeah. team. Like yeah. they wasn't a lot. Like I played nose. I played the four eye things like that. Like it was a lot of bubble screens, stretches, things like that. Like it wasn't anything like a lot. It wasn't anything in between the tackles. So I didn't get make a lot of money, but I did get a, like a lot of good pressures. I ain't get that because get the ball out to quit. I ain't trash. Let me say that again. I ain't trash. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but no, I think when I I think the thing I remember the most, honestly, is that uh, you remember the Pat the Parachute speech by Coach Huxley? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you remember, I remember that. that. Uh, yeah, bro, that's probably one of the funniest speeches <laughs> I ever heard. Coach Huxley just like started off talking about like him being in the military or somebody being in the military and like you got to trust your brother. So you, they used to have to like pack each other's parachute, and that's how you really rely on somebody. So. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that I remember the most uh, was just like, you're, you're my brother. I'm going to pack your parachute. You got to trust me. And so everybody running around I told him, I packed your parachute. We packing each other's parachute. Hey, I think that's what I remember the most, bro. That was kind of funny. Some stories, man. Some stories, though. Coach Huss was funny, bro. Stories. We had some funny coaches coming through our, our facility. We Not did. So we like, did. Yeah, it's like a wide spread. Remember Coach Cross? That, that, that dude will fuck. Bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, hey. We ain't going to talk about nobody in particular, but he put, some, he put some people out there on the hit list for sure. He, he had my dog. Yeah, my dog, stuff. Frank. I tell y'all for that Michigan. Ooh. That Michigan. Juice stuff, ain't it? For the kickoff. Ready to, ready kickoff. to, ready to, ready to run Frank. through a brick wall. Frank. I need you to go blow <laughs> right away. Like somebody got hurt or something. Let's see, he wasn't normally on kickoff team. Okay. Frank, I need you. Uh, I remember being standing like right by the huddle. I wasn't on kickoff. I don't even know why I was standing right there. But like, hey, <laughs> yeah. hey, but hey, Frank was yeah, a missile like, Frank, too, boy. Frank I need you go blow up that wedge. Frank. But, uh, Frank can run now. <laughs> Frank can run, but yeah, he can hit he can hit a little bit. He can hit a little bit too, my dogs. Bro, Frank was, <laughs> Frank was all Boom. like Frank was six. I, Frank was like six I, two, one seventy five, yeah. one eighty, bro. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I, I, crashing I, out. He crashed bro. out for sure. I, he I watched him the whole time. That boy, that boy. Sent my dog. My dog boy, got up, uh, started walking towards they sideline like ooh. <laughs> bro, yeah, it was, it was a I got it, dog. It's not against Indiana. So uh, Indiana, I, I think I, for some reason I only feel like I only played Indiana yeah, it, once. It'd be like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I played in my freshman year and I did catch yes. a pick. Post- yeah. Played him at home. We yeah, played him at home. Yeah, yeah. Pace yeah, yeah. Pro, uh, it yeah. was raining yeah. a little bit. Yeah, it was like raining. I said, I remember Doug. I had, I had like two or three play. presses that game too. <laughs> I remember Doug yeah. striking on them boys. I remember he yeah. looking up at the score while he tight, running. I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I was able to catch a pick. But it's it's funny that you was talking about stories, man. We had a player. Uh, y'all know him, T.J. Raynard. Uh, we was playing at at. Uh, 
at Arizona State. And it's just so crazy, like, how things just shift and happen. So the night before, like, you know, you had cookies and stuff like that, just watching the games, man. And we were sitting down, and TJ just got real serious, and he was like, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll die for y'all boys. And we just like, I was just like, oh, he's tripping. Like, oh, he tripping. What are you talking about? Literally, literally, he ran on kickoff, and I'm talking about like smack man. <laughs> Stop running out of the but neither say it's just like bro it's just crazy the stuff that you know what I'm saying that like we, we like that we see the stories we got like this is what it's all about to be able to just you know sit here and talk about it um years later and laugh about it man I wouldn't trade these memories with you guys for, no, for nothing in the world man, man. Sure. Once in a lifetime sure. opportunity that you get ain't 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 nothing like a college locker room man y'all y'all been in the NFL locker room is it's not the same, yeah. obviously. It's, it ain't the same. There's money involved, man. even though there's money involved now in college football. So I don't, I don't know if it's the same as what it you know, once was. But, yeah, man, definitely wouldn't trade those memories for nothing. But that's a wrap for this Hello. week's Camp Randall Platoon Podcast. You know, I'm James White, along with Sir George Sheldon, Warren Heron, bringing you Badger football news and updates, stories. Got some exclusive content coming soon. Got to stay tuned. Got to stay tuned. Like, subscribe, and follow us, man. <laughs> Yeah.